Um, my name is Dr. Lance Phillips. I, along with Ann Rowland, own Al Software, and we're going to be talking. I'm going to be talking about goal-oriented formulation. Before we get started, I'd kind of like to put the company and the software we're going to be referring to today in context. So I just hit submit. to see. I guess she used this. I don't know how to use a computer. That's my problem. <laughs> You want to change oh the slide? no! Yeah, I, I think I did change the slide. It's just, yeah. it's Enter. it's showing up up there. This works. Good. Al Software is a group of food scientists um, and programmers that develop software programs to meet the needs of the food industry. And our main programs are Tech Wizard, Production Wizard, and we also provide some custom software solutions. Um, Let's see if this moves on to the next one. It's there, isn't it? I know, I'm a computer programmer. It's fun. Okay, I'm going to use this. It's the only one that works. <laughs> Tech Wizard is a research and development software program that offers product development, nutrition labeling, food formulation, and batching all in one program. Production Wizard is a software program that brings the power of Tech Wizard to the plant floor and it simplifies day to day batching and keeps formulas on track. Now, I'm going to be showing you some screenshots today from Tech Wizard uh, during this presentation. All right, we're going to be talking about goal oriented formulation. And by that, I mean product development and daily production of fabricated foods is a complicated process that involves meeting many compositional, nutritional, and sensory requirements simultaneously. And we refer to this process as goal-oriented formulation. And to achieve this, we use linear and nonlinear optimization techniques, so math. So to make this work, you really have to have an understanding of math, chemistry, microbiology, um, angry managers, all sorts of things come together to make this work. So what do I mean by recipe optimization? Recipe optimization is a mathematical procedure to create a re recipe that minimizes cost while meeting preset requirements. So we look at like a whole bunch of candidate components and we're gonna see which blend of all those meets all these requirements we need. Well, what types of food products benefit from recipe optimization? Well, things where you're putting things together, fabricated foods with a required composition, and where it's used the most is in foods where the ingredient composition fluctuates. So things like ice cream, yogurt, processed cheese, processed meats, energy bars and drinks, bakery products, candy, supplement blends, or media blends, all sorts of things like this require um, formulation. So the best way to present our concept of goal-oriented formulation is by showing you examples. And I'm going to start out by making all of you frozen dessert experts. So when you leave here, you can just get a copy of the software and you can go up to Hagen dazs and tell them, no, that's not the way you should be doing this. So the first thing we're going to do is develop a nice 12% fat ice cream. And then we're going to do what has been done in the past. We're going to reduce the fat, fat content to 3% fat. And as most of you know, if I just take the fat and go from 12 to 3, this stuff's going to suck. Or if you go to like one of these restaurants that they have a soft serve and you go over there and you get that cone of soft serve and it feels like somebody just scraped it out of a freezer and put it on a cone, you know, the salesman calls that refreshing. So really bad ice cream in the sales business is refreshing. But what we're going to do is fix it. We're going to determine what to add to that 3% fat ice cream to have a similar sweetness and mouthfeel as the original 12% fat ice cream. So we're going to have to invoke chemistry to make this work. So here we have a screenshot of uh, the Tech Wizard program. And what we've done here is we've developed a 12% fat ice cream. And this is after the fact. 
So let's see, if I push this, there's the laser, right? So this part over here is what we're trying to develop. So if we look at this, um, well, I'm gonna step over here, away from the microphone, but hopefully you'll still hear me. Um, we've got 12% fat, that's what we told it we wanted. 11% milk solids, not fat. 14% sucrose solids. 0.35% stabilizer solids and 0.15% emulsifier. So these are all common things that you would find in a 12% fat ice cream. Now while we're at it, we said, well, we want, a relative, we want to track some other properties like relative sweetness, sucrose equivalents, and I'm going to get to what those mean as well as the total solids content. We're going to also track what we call complex properties. And in this case, the complex properties are the freezing point of this ice cream in both Fahrenheit and centigrade, and then the amount of ice it would contain at uh, two different temperatures, 20 de 2 degrees Fahrenheit and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So we hit the formulate button after we set all these requirements. So we hit formulate. It starts up its uh, linear programming and nonlinear programming components, and it spits out this percentage of each ingredient. And here's our candidate ingredients, cream and milk and condensed skim and liquid sugar and stabilizer and emulsifier. Fine. Now, these complex properties are based on equations. And one of the things we've done to the software that makes it really powerful is if you have some sort of interaction that you know uh, you can mathematically represent that's also based on changes in amounts of certain ingredients, then you can say, I want to set this to be a certain level and formulate to this. Well, why have we got relative sweetness and ice content in here in the first place? Well, it turns out if you look at ice creams and different frozen desserts, you'll find that the relative sweetness, and this is the amount of sugar as compared to a sugar solution. So if we look at ice cream, the relative sweetness runs between 13% and 16%. So the first thing I look at if somebody sends me a new ice cream sample is I look at what's the relative sweetness. And if it's 12, I don't have to eat it. I already know this isn't gonna work because people like their sugar to be in there at a certain level. So if you're trying to make a frozen dessert and you change it too much, sure enough, people won't like it. And the ice content is another key. Um, <laughs> this is great. What have I done? I've turned it off. Okay. Well, they don't let me use the computer at home. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the ice content here is very important because what I'm about to do in this next slide is I'm going to reformulate this guy. And we're going to take it and we're going to say, okay, tech wizard, I want you to set the fat content now at 3%, hit the formulate button, and sure enough, it spit out a formula that's got the same milk solids, not fat, same amount of stabilizer. And